Hi, this is Critical Motion from the Chiefs, and today in episode four, we're gonna be looking at positioning and map knowledge, and looking at ways that you and your team can win way more games. Let's jump into it. Positioning and map knowledge is extremely important in PUBG. Knowing the small things about the areas where you land can uh, have huge impacts on your battles. Small examples are things like Paradise, which you could be dropping in. Most people know you can get on the roofs, it's just moving around them correctly and using them to your advantage is pretty huge. It's very hard to tell if, you're, uh, if someone's above or below you in PUBG. One of the most annoying things is when there's a player sitting on this corner, which we can't, could, could not really see if he didn't have the name tag. I've been killed many, many times by someone just sitting here. You can't really blame them. In general though, there's not too many secrets with like positions in a place like Paradise, but everyone generally knows. You can just like vault over the sides, get on top of everything. I think the ledge grab feature in PUBG is underutilized right now. It's a new feature and a lot of people don't seem to realize what's possible. Uh, just things like getting on this roof, which is, it's not that extreme, but most people just aren't going to be looking up here. So if I wanted to actually get into here straight away, instead of having to run up, and vault over. You can actually just use ledge grab now. Same thing goes here. You can't naturally jump over here without ledge grab. And this is done just by holding your vault key midair. Learning some of these hot drop locations is pretty important to surviving. Uh, it's very important to know the layouts of the map. So going back to like last episode, talking about peaks advantage, you need to know what you're peaking. You need to have played through the map to, to know what's actually possible around each corner. Map knowledge is also extremely important once, say you have hot dropped and you then need to leave. Uh, knowing where you're gonna get killed from like while, while trying to exit the area is also very important. Sanok really is just one big running fest though. You can generally rotate directly through tree lines whenever possible. There's some very important parts to the map based on the circles you get. Uh, for example, if you get a circle that actually heads up over here across the island, some of the choke points become extremely important. There's some pretty vital spots on the map, uh, like this sandbar here. If the circle is kind of like this and people are forced to cross, it can be often a spot that you can just pick up free kills. People are forced to move really slowly across here, and while they can have their gun out, they're very vulnerable. After the initial hot drop on Sanok, I'd say this area is one of the most dangerous in the entire map. Obviously, boot camp is located right nearby, which means anyone who won the fight at boot camp is probably nearby and very equipped. If you're forced to cross this open area by the circle, it's always going to be extremely dangerous. So it's definitely an area to avoid if possible. Going later into the game as the circle progresses, uh, there's definitely some very good spots you can hold that are more on hills rather than buildings. Holding areas like this is extremely good to control the map, but on Sanok, it's actually very easy to get pushed still. Even if you have people looking everywhere, it's entirely possible that someone will get to you. A lot of my kills on Sanok, personally, I hear first before I see. Like, even if I'm just running through the jungle, I'll often just hear someone about 20 meters to my left or right. It's always better to stay alive longer to get more kills, even if it means a worse circle position. At a lot of times on Sanok, there'll be people holding buildings. It's kind of just natural to most players to stay inside buildings to hold them. They feel more safe. Very easy to approach them though. For example, this building has no angles looking this way. So if they're not watching you correctly, you can almost approach like fairly silently. And the way I like to do it is once I get close enough, you can pretty much hear everything they're doing. Footsteps on inside houses are just extremely obvious and it lets you react to the, how they're going to move, especially if they don't know you exist yet. As we've touched on circle positioning, in Red Bull Fight or Flight, the circle is gonna be much faster, which is very scary. So you're gonna to have to make choices much quicker. Some of these choices may be extremely risky, but in general, you're just gonna be wanting to get towards the middle of the circle as much as possible so that you don't have to deal with chasing the circle all game. In some cases, if you're extremely extremely far out and you have no choice, you may actually have to use vehicles on Sanok, which is generally not advised because uh, vehicles are just huge targets. And if you come close to people on Sanok, they'll probably just blow up your vehicle. But at a certain point, you have no choice and rushing center in a car can work. It can also just be a great way to end the game quickly, but it could also be the winning play. We're gonna talk about a little small trick that's uh, it's not that secret or anything, but a lot of players ask me about it and that's window jumping. Uh, you used to be able to control 
uh, crouch jump into Windows, but they changed the game and they added Vault, so crouch jumping no longer works. But you can actually still do it. All you do is sprint at a window and jump. And when you do that, you get caught in the windowsill, like this. And you can then crouch, which allows you to move through the window and take up unique angles that a lot of players won't expect. I hope those positioning tips can help you level up your chances to win games with your team. There are three previous episodes full of information if you want more ways to win. And coming up next is teamwork. For more details on Red Bull Fight or Flight, you can check out the link below.